we, what is the empirical formula of a compound that is 40.0% carbon? So that means that we have 40 grams of carbon in our imaginary sample, 6.71% hydrogen, which is 6 grams of hydrogen, and 53.9% oxygen, which is 53.9 grams of oxygen. All of these we want to convert into moles using their atomic masses. One mole of hydrogen is 1.0079 grams of hydrogen. And last, one mole of oxygen is 15.99 grams of oxygen. Now we are going to calculate how many moles we have of each one of these substances. 40 divided by 12.011 is... 3.33 moles, 6.71 divided by 1.0079 is 6.66 6 moles, and 53.9 divided by 15.99, 3.37 moles of oxygen. And our last step here. Looking at all three of these numbers, find the smallest number, divide all of them by that number. That's going to give us one mole of carbon. It's going to give us two moles of hydrogen. And that will work out to be about one mole of oxygen. So our empirical formula here is C... H2O. Now this problem has a second part to it. This problem says what is the molecular formula if the mass is 90 grams per mole? Remember the empirical formula is just the smallest whole number ratio. The molecular formula could be C6H2O, that's possible, or it could be C2H4O2, that would be possible, or C3H8O3. Three. That would also be possible. If this is kind of confusing to you, you probably, actually, I think I made a mistake there. Um, you probably just need to brush up on the definition of molecular versus empirical formula. C3H6O3 looks better. So this problem is saying if we know that the molar mass is 90 grams per mole, and we know that the empirical formula is C3 CH2O, what is the molecular formula? Usually the fastest way to do this type of calculation is to calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula. So that's going to be 12 for the carbon plus approximately 2 for the two hydrogens plus 16 for the oxygen. CH2O is 30 grams per mole. If we know that the molecular, uh, the molar mass is 90 grams per mole, we can see that 90 is three times greater than 30. So we're comparing these two masses, 90 versus 30. And that means that the molecular formula must be three times greater than the empirical formula, C3H6O3. If we double check the math on that, 3 times 12 is 36 plus 6 for all of those hydrogens plus 16, 16, and 16 for the three oxygen, 90 grams per mole. Let's look at one more of these problems. This is actually going to be a very complicated one. What is the empirical formula of a compound that is 43.9% carbon, 7.3% hydrogen, and 48.8% oxygen. So the first thing that we want to do is convert all of these into moles. And I'm going to abbreviate their atomic masses just to make things go a little bit faster. So one mole of carbon is 12 grams. Approximately one mole of hydrogen is one gram. Approximately one mole of oxygen is approximately 16 grams of oxygen. And let's figure out where we are with the uh, molar ratio here. 43.9 divided by 12 is, I think I did that wrong, 43.9 divided by 12 is 
7.66 moles of carbon. 7.3 divided, oh, I don't need to do that. 7.3 divided by 1 is 7.3 moles of hydrogen. And 48.8 divided by 16 is 3.05 moles of oxygen. So again, we look at these three numbers, we find the smallest, and we divide all of them by that small number, 3.05 divided by 3.05 divided by 3.05. So that works out to be 3.66 divided by 3.05 is 1.2 moles of carbon. We have 7.3 divided by 3.05. 2.4 moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. Now here we are kind of in a bit of a pickle because normally after we do this step, we end up with some really nice clean numbers. And here we have not ended up with some nice clean numbers. You can probably see that there's the beginning of a pattern here that uh, makes it look like there should be some math that we can do to fix this, and we absolutely can. There's a few different strategies that people take when they're in this situation. Let me tell you right off the bat, the wrong strategy is to just start heavily rounding. So just turning these into these numbers, that is definitely not how you want to solve this type of a problem. These numbers should be working out to be nice, clean numbers. For me personally, when I get into a situation like this, the next step I like to take is just to multiply everything by 10. So I like to move my decimal point over. So now I have 12 moles of carbon. I have 24 moles of hydrogen and I have 10 moles of oxygen. So C12H24O10. Now I've got them into nice whole numbers. This is clearly not an empirical formula because the empirical formula should be the ratio. And this is not the lowest whole number ratio. So my next step then is just to turn this into an empirical formula. It looks like if I divide everything by two, C6H12O5, that works out perfect. And so here is my empirical formula. If I felt uncertain about this, I don't, but if I felt uncertain about this, I could actually calculate percent composition, you know how to do that, and make sure that the numbers match up with the numbers that were given to us in the problem. Um, also, you know, if you're very comfortable with math and you're seeing this relationship, you might have been able to see right away the correct number to multiply here would have been five. That would have taken us straight to the empirical formula. And maybe, you know, your math background is strong enough that you are able to do that and you don't need to have this multiply by 10 and then simplify step. Either way, you should be able to get the same answer. And you can always double check, like I said, by calculating the percent composition once you think you know the answer.